If you've ever needed to create any kind of a sliding bar graph for your video project, let me show you an easy way to do that. From the edit page, go up to your media pool, right click and create new fusion composition. Now you can call this anything you want. I'm gonna call this health bar. Left click, drag and bring that down into your timeline. I'm gonna stretch it out a bit so it's a little bit longer. Right click and let's choose to open in the fusion page. Now all we've got is a media out node because we haven't built anything yet. So let's start by grabbing a background, dragging it down into your node graph area, and let's connect that to your media out. Now I don't actually want any color on this, so I'll go up to the upper right and turn the alpha down to nothing so I have complete transparency. And now I've got a nice clean slate to start building. Now I'm gonna grab another background node and bring that down in, and I'm gonna merge it in front of that background by connecting the output of the second background to the output of the first. And you'll see it automatically creates a merge node for me. Now with this second background node selected, I'm gonna to go to the upper right and I'm gonna change this from solid color down to gradient. Now because I'm doing more of a video game style health bar, I wanna change this from red to green. And on this gradient bar, you can see there are a couple different arrows representing different points of this gradient that you can left click and drag. And you can even select and change the color of. Let me select the one on the left, hit the color options, and let me change that to red and hit OK. Now we'll go back up to the upper right and hit the upper gradient arrow all the way to the right, hit the color option again, and let's change this one to green. But I want a little bit of yellow in the middle and it doesn't really have yellow. So in that gradient bar, I'm just gonna click in the middle and it'll add another color point wherever I clicked. Let me choose the color for that one, and I'm gonna swap that to yellow. Now I have the red, yellow, green gradient I'm looking for. Now I wanna change the size of this so it's more like a long, narrow bar shape. So with that background node selected, I'm gonna go just above it and hit transform, and it will add a transform node right there. Let's select that transform node, and in the upper right, I can change the size by dragging down to the left. And if I grab the aspect slider and pull to the left, you can see it shrinks it down to a long, narrow bar shape. Now I'm gonna need the ability to animate the motion of this bar, either growing or shrinking. So I'm gonna select the background node and I'm going to add a rectangle mask onto that. Now right off the bat, you can see it's done something really weird, but with that rectangle mask selected, what I want you to do is go to the upper right inspector and increase the width of it and increase the height of it. And now to see what that mask is doing, left click and hold on the center X value and drag left and right. Can you see how it's masking out our background gradient shape a little bit differently? Depending on what you wanna do, you may need to change or invert this mask. As it's set now, I could pull to the left and make this shrink, or I could pull to the right and make that graph grow. But you could also invert that mask and then send it all the way off screen and do the opposite. And you could pull in the green end, or you could actually bring the other side in and mask away from the left side. I'm gonna leave the invert turned off and set both the center X and center Y for 0.5. Now that I've got this entire thing built, I'd like to put a little bit of an outline and some drop shadow around it. So I'm gonna go up to the upper left and click on effects and scroll down to templates. And using the search function, I'm gonna look for outer stroke. Let me left click on that, drag it down and drop it right in after the merge. You can see it's added a white outline and a bit of a drop shadow. Now you can control these in the upper right, change the position and the size and the blur of the shadow, and you can change the color of the outline as well as the size of it. Now that I have all that built, I'm gonna need to add some text. So let me go up to the text node icon and drag that down into my timeline. And I want it to come after all of this stuff that I've just built. So I'm gonna grab the output of the text node and attach it to the output of the outer stroke. And it'll add that merge node in and allow me to add a new layer of text. Now I'm gonna select the text node, go up to the upper right inspector, and let's type in something. I'm gonna type in the word health. Then you can see it's put it right here on screen for me. I can actually left click right in the middle of that center dot and drag this over, put this wherever I want. And with that text selected, you can change the font, you can change it to bold or italic, whatever you'd like. I'd actually like to add a little drop shadow in to match this bar. So with that text node selected, I'm gonna hit shift and space bar to open up my tools menu, and I'm gonna type in drop shadow. Let me just click add, and it'll add it right after that text node. Now with that drop shadow selected, in the upper right, I'm gonna pull back the blur because I can't really see where the shadow is. Now I can see it's quite a bit away, so I'm gonna wanna bring that drop distance closer. Right in about there, and then add a little blur back in. 
And now that I have all of this built, I can animate this mask with keyframes to have that health slider move. Let me put my playhead all the way back to the left. I'm gonna select that rectangle mask. And in the upper right inspector, I'm gonna put a keyframe right here. Now I'm gonna move the playhead forward to the end and then I'm gonna grab that center X by left clicking and holding and dragging to the left. And you can see that mask is actually shrinking down the health bar meter. It's also added another keyframe in the upper right. And now if I go back to the edit page, you can see that I have a health bar meter that's slowly getting smaller in size. If I left click, drag that up to another track, I can grab some footage of a person, put that underneath it. Let me spin him around in the opposite direction. And with that health bar selected in my timeline, I can go just to the lower left of my preview window and turn on the transform option. And that'll allow me to left click and drag right in my preview window and move that health meter around to wherever I want it, including changing the size. Now, when I hit play, I've got a health bar meter. You can actually save this health bar meter by just throwing it up into your power bins and you'll have it there for later on if you need it for a different project. Also, if you right click on this and turn it into a new compound clip, name that whatever you want. It'll now be treated just like a video clip, which means you can right click on it, go up to retime controls, and you can slow it down and speed it up just by left clicking and dragging in the upper right corner. Let's make it go super fast. Pretty cool, huh? This guy seems pretty happy that his health is going down the tubes. 